Hello there, welcome to this video in which I'm going to teach you a blues. It's been a while since I've done a, done a blues tutorial and I thought you might enjoy it because um, there's a bit of a sort of surprise at the end of the video. Uh, no need to jump ahead, it's not in the timestamps, um, but it's an educational surprise. Um, so I'm just going to go straight into it. As always, like, comment, subscriptions are welcome. Have a look at my video management website, Warspeed, or Syllabus, Pat's Patreon, and all the other goodies. Everything is below. So uh, I'll demonstrate in the key of C, but I do encourage you to play this in other keys. Now, the kind of the main point of this is that I'd like you to highlight a note in the scale of the scale degrees. I'm going to take the sixth in this example in the key of C, because that's a nice kind of jazzy, bluesy note. So I'm, instead of just basing all the riffs around C and just doing everything around C, like, like is often the case, it's nice to try to make the sort of the root of your ideas a different note than the root of the key and doing it on the sixth or the third even the flat five or the flat seven these, these are nice uh, notes to use as a bass so I'm gonna give you the left hand chord but I'm gonna give you a couple of chords actually and by all means copy what I'm doing but uh, like I say this is, I'm teaching it to you but there's a bit of a surprise at the end but by all means you can copy this by watching it over I'd like you to try your own so watch this C7 in the left hand voiced as three seven root you can put a nine on top if you want i'm going to keep it simple and just put the uh, octave there dropping down to f7 third inversion it doesn't matter it's just a flat seven the three and the five so it's a nice easy little change so you can get used to that now uh when you go up to the g uh, i'm actually going to make it a little bit more complicated i know i just said i'm going to keep the chord easy but i want to give you a more interesting uh, progression and that's the six two five one so I'm going to play this you're going to get it you're going to feel it you need to feel the structure of the blues very important so just let me just do this and just, see, just don't look for any lead sheets or anything because there aren't any so let's just go one two three four Six. Now that is a is an A13, with a, but the 13 is flattened. Just remember this shape when you're playing the blues in C because it sounds really nice. Flat, flat seven in the key of A, so dominant seven. Third, this would be the 13, but it's flattened to an F. And you just drop that shape chromatically down and it becomes the, the right chord. So here we're in A. And now when you go to the D one, you're going to drop everything down a semitone. So F sharp, C, E key of D this is now 3 flat 7 or dominant 7 call it one, and 9 and when you go to G because you're doing a 6 it's too low 6 2 5 here 6 2 5 1 so this is the 6 chord just remember the shape don't worry about the theory 2 5 on the G drop it down a semitone again but you can you keep the E on top and you just go down to F and B that gives you G 13 it's quite nice but if you want to, you can take it even further and you could go from the D shape. Uh, you could drop everything down a semitone. So you get F, the B and the E flat. Also works because you'd call that like a flat 13, which is a nice jazzy, bluesy kind of sound. Just put the line in there, but anyway, that, that's quite nice. So let me just do it again. I did a similar kind of thing, but that time I just did it as a normal 13 and dropping down symmet symmetrically. Don't worry about the theory, just remember the shapes. I like a little bit of fun without worrying about theory. And then back to the C one. If you want to put the E on, on the D on top, you can, because when you go to the F chord, that now becomes F13. Again, don't worry too much about the theory. You can ask questions. I have other videos on that. But I just want to get the shape down. Now, the right hand, the melody that I'm doing here, interesting. Because I've told you that it's not written down anywhere, and I would like to teach you this blues, which sounds a bit weird, but there is a point to this. Look, what am I doing? You can do the first one, 
but it's nice to just change it. So it's nice to do a 13, that becomes D, this is a sharp 9, and then G13. So what I'm actually doing in the right hand, this is kind of the surprise part, is that what I'm teaching you, I'm just making up. I haven't practiced this. I just honestly pressed record, fixed a ridiculous sound problem, and eventually uh, got to the video and decided spontaneously as I was speaking that I was going to highlight a melody on the sixth. That is exactly what I'd like you to do. That's why there's nothing to read. You choose a note, you choose a key first of all, and you choose a note value that you're going to use as the bass, and you just mess around. Now I'm mainly playing the notes of the major scale actually, but with a blues, let's call it like a theoretical filter, I know that to make it sound bluesy, the nine is nice, uh, the sharp nine and the flat nine sound quite nice, but the sharp nine especially, or the minor you might call it, and the flat five and the dominant seven, the flat seven. These sound nice, so all I'm doing is, see, I'm, this is my main sort of target note, G is safe, because it's a five, of course one, three and five are safe, because they're the major triad notes, uh, and then I'm sometimes touching on a nine, sometimes I might touch on a sharp nine, go on the flat seven, on the flat five sometimes, this is just, a, and you just play your own little riff with that nice little chord, put any rhythm, any rhythm that you want, I'm just doing it in kind of like gentle swing. So that sounds quite nice. I'm just feeling that inside. But look at the note values I'm playing. 6, 5, root, dominant 7, 13. Because you're in the key of F. So that was up, up the chord of F7 from the 6, from the 13. Now we're on C again. Now we're going to go to just A. Now you can stay in the master key, which is C. And all of these chords, which is a sort of a magical thing of the blues theory, when you go to the D, all the blues notes work, including the major third, of course, because that's the nine in D, and on G, it all works. All the note values change, but they all sound bluesy, and it says something called musical context, which is why that works. So, let me just do another one. Let's go down to the flat five now. I'm going to do some riffs, and they're going to base be based around the flat five. This is the flat 5 in F, that's why I'm playing B, it's technically C flat. That was it, I put a 9 in there as well, but whatever. And I could have just continued. That's the idea. So I hope there's quite a lot to take away from that. It doesn't need to be a long video. Um, so you just pick a key, you know, just use that nice chord check. You might transpose that into another key if you would like, but really get familiar with that A13 flat, sorry, A flat 13. And then dropping down a semitone. It just sounds really, really nice, really, really bluesy. Nice shapes, there's a normal 13. This becomes D sharp nine. And do like this flat 13, regular 13. All these things sound quite nice. Uh, just, you know, choose a note here mess around with it, play nice little licks. You can just do this forever, you could create your own backing track and just play around forever to see what happens naturally, that's so important. You don't need to follow any books, you don't need to follow any lead sheets, any scores, any written improvisations, um, just play you and see what happens and I think you'd be quite amazed, as, as, especially if you just apply that blues theory layer filter of the minor is nice, which is also the flat, the sharp nine, the flat five, it's also sharp 11, but you call it flat 5 and blues, and the flat 7. That's it, along with the major scale. And you're going to sound pretty good if you keep it in time. So there you go. As always, likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my video management website, Warspinism, Zidibus, Pat's Patreon, all the other goodies are below. I'll see you in the next video. All the best. Bye for now.